few months ago, the folks over at Evolution Power Tools sent out a really nice cold saw. And now they have sent out another tool for us to take a look at. I'm John Switzer, and you're watching Black Bear Forge. Now before we get into today's video and taking a closer look at the Evolution Power Tools magnetic drill, I just want to say that this video is not being sponsored by Evolution Tools. They did send the saw out for free, so I get to keep the saw, but they are not paying for me to do the video. So the opinions expressed are purely my own. But before we do that, I thought I would take a look at a little bit of other mail that came. Now some things I've ordered. People ask sometimes, where do you get some of this stuff? This little order that I've got in my hands, some Iron Mountain Flux and some more of the Carolina Hot Mill Gloves, came from Blacksmith's Depot, or Canaan Sons as they used to be called. And they also sent out a nice catalog. Canaan Sons has lots and lots of stuff. And I ordered from them this time specifically because they had both products that I were looking for. I order from some other places besides Blacksmith's Depot, but often if you need a variety, you got to kind of shop around to see who carries everything that you're looking for right then. So thanks to Blacksmith's Depot for shipping this stuff right out. And no, they didn't send this for free. It's all stuff I ordered and paid for. But then I also got an envelope in the mail. And when this came, I thought it was something I had ordered because I was expecting something that would come in an envelope about this size. So I wasn't very surprised to get this envelope. But lo and behold, when I open this up, it is not the thing I ordered. This comes from Thomas. Thomas says, I used to be a wood turner, but all the dust got to be too much, so I started looking for a new hobby and found your YouTube channel. And you inspired me to try out my hand at blacksmithing. I am almost finished setting up my shop. I just wanted to send one of the pins I made. Since you were fireman, I just wanted to say thanks. This pin, besides being fire engine red, has a couple of little ladder trucks cast into the side here, whatever this piece is, and I assume he had to do that because I doubt you can buy that pre-made. The axe mounted on the handle that serves as a pocket clip is also what activates the pin. So that's a pretty ingenious device. I've never seen anything quite like it. Little fire department Maltese cross on this end, and the writing end looks like a nozzle. Frankly, I wouldn't have been surprised if it squirted water. It'd be a pretty fun little squirt gun, really. But anyways, thank you, Thomas, for sending the pin out. This will go on my desk downstairs. I don't think I'm going to keep it in the shop. It's too nice a pin and too special to let get beat up and abused in the shop. So thanks again for the pin. I really appreciate that. But now on to the subject of the video. We're going to start by going back in time a little bit to the Evolution Power Tools cold saw. Now, when we originally took a look at this saw, I just did all my test cuts right here on this bench and just let the saw sit here. Worked great, no real problem, other than this just isn't where I want to use a saw. It's kind of in my way here. And after that, it moved out over to the bandsaw and sat on the table for the bandsaw for a while. And it's also in the way there because even though this is going to get used for some of the things I used to use the bandsaw for, I still use the bandsaw, so I don't want to just use it as a saw table. Now my old abrasive chop saw had a stand, but I don't really want to get rid of it. I think there's still going to be times I'm going to want the abrasive saw and I'm going to need to cut things like an axle shaft or something that's hardened. And I don't want to abuse the blade on this trying to cut through some sort of hardened material. So I want to have both of those saws available and I don't want two separate stands moving around. So I took the time to build a new stand for both this saw and the abrasive saw. So my plan then is to mount these two saws side by side. I think as long as I keep the tables lined up and the fences lined up in the furthest back position, they're never going to be in each other's way. At least not enough that I think it's ever going to bother me, but that way I can use either saw. It gives me a much better table than the small stand that I had before that when you made a cut, things fell on the floor. And this way they'll fall on the table or you don't have to bend down to pick them up. Hopefully that's going to be good and I'll take a and we'll take a closer look at this table and what I did and some other features it has as we go along. And I promise that this is all going to have to do with why I'm really glad to have a mag drill in the shop. Now to line these up, I'm going to put a big piece of bar in the vices. Now, unfortunately, these are different height tables, so I'm going to have to put some spacers under this and bring it up. 
not really a big deal. It'll work just fine. But this way I can guarantee that my two fences, I've already made sure they're both square to the blades, and my two fences then will be just fine. I want to make sure my holes clear my leg on the stand. Move the whole assembly over just a little bit there. And I think that's going to work out. I'll just take my silver pencil, which fits right down through the slots, and mark the holes. And this one I think only has three mounting holes. I don't find any way to mount the back corner, so we just won't worry about it. There's some mechanical pencil that doesn't fit in these holes, so I'm just going to use one of the wooden ones that I don't like so much. Now this table is just a little bit shy of two foot by five feet long, and it's quarter inch plate for a top and quarter by two angle iron for the rails, some two inch square tubing for the legs. It's a pretty heavy table. There is no way I'm going to put this under a drill press. In fact, even if it was a lightweight table, there is no way that it's going to fit under a drill press, although I suppose I could have drilled the top before putting it on if it was lighter. But the top probably weighs about 75 pounds, so one way or the other, that's not the way I was going to do this. You could certainly drill it with a hand drill. It takes a long time. It's kind of a pain, kind of hard on your hand drill. And that's where a magnetic drill really comes in handy at least it does in my shop. So let's go unbox the magnetic drill and see what we're going to have to do to be able to drill holes in this bench and other things that we might need to mount equipment to here in the shop. Well, let's go ahead and take this out of the box and see what we've got here. Comes in a really nice plastic case here so we can store it. And here then is the mag drill in its case. I think I'll just take everything out so we can take a closer look at what all it comes with. So a mag drill or a magnetic drill is just the mini drill press, but very powerful little drill press that has a magnetic base. So you can flip on that magnet, electromagnet, and you can stick it to any piece of steel you want to stick it to. Now I'm going to put these side handles on here. Now for me, a mag drill is one of those things that is really useful if I want to mount a vise or something to one of these big tables, or if you have a project that you need to drill a hole in that you just can't get to the drill press, you can put it on the table, clamp it down to the table, and bring the drill to the project and be very precise. In the construction industry, mag drills are wonderful if you're working with I-beams and things like that because you can stick this upside down on an I-beam and drill a hole to mount something else to or sideways wherever you need to put it, you're not limited by that column on the back of a drill press. You don't have to hand hold it. You can just hang this upside down and it will drill some pretty big holes with some special drill bits. And we'll take a look at some of those bits later. But this is essentially the, the mag drill here. A nice little compact unit. It's got a switch for the, the magnet and a switch for the drill. And we'll have to take a look at that. I may have to read the instructions just in case there's anything that I don't quite understand. I've used mag drills before. I've always had to borrow a mag drill from a friend. So when I mounted my Beverly shear to my big work table or my Whitney punches to the table, I had to wait until it was convenient for me to get up to his place and he's about three hours away. So it was never a real convenient thing. And of course you can probably rent these. But having one in the shop is always a nice, convenient way to go. It means that you're more likely to do some of the things that you think this would come in handy for. It comes with a strap, and the strap is if you're working other than on a flat surface like this, you should always safety strap it in case the power cuts off. You don't want that magnet to let go and drop this thing on somebody's head. That would be a really ugly situation. It's got some guards on it, which for some purposes probably aren't real necessary. 
But for others, we're going to be really glad to have those. And it's got a little cooling tank that we can put on this. I'll have to figure out how that mounts or where it goes. None of the mag drills I've ever borrowed had a cooling tank. And I suspect for using regular drill bits, it's not completely necessary, but for using the special bits, the annular bits that are often used with a mag drill, I think the cooling tank probably is necessary. And then something else that it came with. Got a, an assortment of Allen wrenches and fittings that I think go to that cooling tank. But it also has a regular drill chuck in here so that you can use conventional twist drills. You don't just have to use the drills that are designed for it. And this is the thing that I will use the most. The other bits will come in handy because like I say, they'll drill a really big hole. But this is going to be the thing that gets used the most here in my shop. And for mounting those saws on that table, this is exactly what we're going to use. There are two flats on this adapter that go with the set screws to line up. So that goes in there. And they provide the right size wrench. Seems like a lot of people provide Allen wrenches these days. A good way to collect a whole set of Allen wrenches, just buy a lot of tools. So now this just functions like any other little drill press, other than the fact it's completely portable. So it's a center punch mark there. I can run the drill head down. It's not spring loaded. It doesn't just bounce back up like a regular drill press. You manual up or manual down. But I can put the drill bit right in the center punch mark, get it lined up, then turn the magnet on. And now that's not going to move. I could probably pick this table up. That magnet is so strong. I'm not going to try, but I just suspect. A little drop of oil on there. And that is all there is to it. Turn the magnet back off and move it to the next hole. That makes drilling these holes just a piece of cake. So we'll do the same thing over here for the next hole. Fortunately, some of my pencil marks didn't show up on the second saw, so I'm going to need to redo those. But we can drill these three holes for this saw and see how it works. Now that older wooden silver pencil I was using didn't actually leave a mark. That lead is kind of dried out. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt this saw down. I'll clamp both of them back up again, get everything lined back up, and I'll find another way to mark that hole down through there and get that one drilled as well. But so far, I'm really impressed with this thing. It is certainly more precise than my beat-up old drill press. Of course, that doesn't surprise me because it is, well, a beat-up old drill press. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to do that. We're going to get this all bolted down. 
I have spacers prepared to go under the cold saw that should bring it up to the same height as the other saw, and that's going to make life a lot easier in the long run. So the spacers have this lined up nicely, and I've got it all clamped back up so I can remark these, and I'll just use a transfer punch to, to do this. Now that back hole, I can't get a transfer punch into, so I'll have to measure it. And hopefully that leaves me marks I'll be able to find this time. Yep. I'll deepen that a little bit. Then my procedure here will be exactly the same. Now something I should have mentioned while I was bolting that saw down is that the Evolution saw comes with this really nice metal chip tray so you can collect the chips and get rid of them. Unfortunately, this slides in from the back, and I don't plan on moving that stand to get to it. I suppose I could have put it on wheels, but I still don't really plan on moving it around, and I don't think I ever would have been able to access this conveniently. So I went ahead and took it off, and I took the plate that it sat on off, so that way all the chips are just going to fall right down to the tabletop. And with those spacers in there, I've got plenty of room that I can get in there with some sort of a tool and clean that out. Maybe I'll make something similar to the coal rake I made the other day that just lives with the saw for cleaning out underneath there and pulling out all the chips and the junk. And that way I can easily clean up and dispose of that. Normally I think the tray's a good idea, but just wasn't something I was going to use with that configuration. But that does show you just some of the basics of what you can do with a mag drill and that's really convenient you can use it on any metal surface if I need to mount something to the side of my hydraulic press as long as I'm clear of the hydraulic lines I could drill a hole in it to mount some sort of an extra fixture or a handle or something and I don't have to try and wrestle it around don't have to try and hold a hand drill this would do that job mounting another vise to the center of this even temporary mountings you can drill a hole mount something, unbolt it, get rid of it later. The hole stays, but it's usually not a problem. You'll probably find some other reason to use it. But I mentioned there were some special cutters and special bits that come with this, and that's these annular cutters. At least I think annular cutters is what they're called. And these are actually hollow. They've got a little lineup pin to help you find your center punch mark, but they are a hollow cutter, and these drill much bigger holes. The specs say that this will drill half inch with a regular twist drill and then up to an inch and five eighths with one of these annular cutters. Now the largest one they sent is 15 sixteenths, but that's still a pretty darn good size hole and it's a lot easier to drill with something like this probably than it is with a great big twist drill. So we're going to try this out and it looks like the smallest annular bit is nine sixteenths. So this is a nice set of bits. We should be able to figure out some things to do with this and these have to go in this kind of a drill because they have these flat spots and they don't go in a regular drill chuck. So these aren't for your drill press. They have to go in something like a mag drill or at least something that has a chuck like this. So let's take the, the regular chuck off. And I'll go ahead and put one of these in and set up to drill a really nice big hole. And for this, Evolution sent us a nice piece of one inch plate so we can try this out. So this will be a really good test on this drill. Now, this thing is loud enough, you do want hearing protection. So now this pin is retractable. It pushes up in there. There's a spring-loaded mechanism that guarantees that it retracts or stays put when you need to line something up like this.
And I don't have any cutting fluid other than my regular oil for the drill press, so I'm going to use that. I'm going to do a lot of this. I would definitely invest in some machinist style cutting fluid. To stop and clear these chips off of there. That's what that guard is for, but I thought I'd leave it off so you can see what I'm doing better. So that is real time drilling through a piece of one inch plate. Now there is a core in there. So the core fell out, it didn't get stuck in the bed. That's exactly what I would hope for. Well, it's the next day because I got that last segment so far out of focus that there's just no way you guys wanted to look at it. But in any case, it's time to wrap up this video and tell you what my thoughts are on the Evolution Tools mag drill. I'm highly impressed with it. I have no complaints about it really whatsoever. There's only one feature that I might like to have seen in this, and that is a base that allows you to lock the magnet down and still readjust the drill a little bit and then lock the drill down to the magnet. I've seen some other brands that do that. I don't know how necessary that is because it wasn't that big a deal to just put the center of the drill bit right in the center punch mark get it lined up exactly where you want it, then turn the magnet on. So I don't know if that's a necessary feature, but it's one I've seen before and might not be a bad idea. But otherwise, I was very impressed with this. It's going to do everything I'm ever going to need a mag drill to do. I remember that the Blacksmith Journal years ago, now that's a publication that's no longer in print, but I think you might be able to find reprints online that you can buy and print out on your own computer. They had a stand for a mag drill, and it was something that could be used then as a secondary drill press or a replacement to a drill press, but it also went horizontal and would allow you to use those annular bits with the hollow center for inboring and machining a tenon on the end of a bar. So you're actually cutting the outside of the bar away and leaving that center section, and you could put tenons on bars that way. Don't know how practical that is. It seems like it might still be faster to forge them, but it's something I'll probably try to do. I may not build the stand just the way they had it. I may see if I can find some other way to set that up and try it out. But if it turns out to be really practical, it might be worth building a stand just for this that would allow then for that horizontal boring operation. So once again, Evolution Tools, thank you for sending the drill out. It was a pleasure to try it out, see what it would do in the shop. 
It took care of a couple of projects that I've been sitting around waiting to do because I just needed a way to drill the holes in conveniently and I was putting off just getting that little hand drill out to do it with. Now I commented on that table for the two chop saws and the other thing that I did with that that I thought was worthy of noting is that I put a stock rack under it so that's almost a five foot long table. There's room for four foot plus bars underneath that table. So all of the tool steels that I use routinely in the shop, the W1, O1, S7, 4140, 5160, things like that, can now live on that instead of leaning up against the wall where they have been forever. And that cleans up what was otherwise kind of a cluttered area in the shop, makes use of the space underneath that table that previously was just wasted space when the other stand was there. There was nothing going on there except stuff tended to fall on the floor and collect there. So it's really going to be a big improvement to have that. And just something I thought worth mentioning if you're thinking about building some sort of a stand or table or work surface in your own shop. Now I was going to post this video on Thursday morning and let you know that we we're going to do a live stream on Saturday morning where I actually plan to do some kind of forging. But unfortunately, I didn't get it done because it was out of focus, so you're actually, so probably this didn't post until early the next week, maybe Monday, maybe Tuesday, and that means that live stream has already happened. So I hope those of you that had a chance to stop by for the live stream enjoyed it, and hopefully we'll be able to keep doing those live streams, and we'll keep trying to schedule those on the same days that the Rocky Mountain Smiths had their monthly demos scheduled for, as long as there are no live demos. Now July didn't have a demo scheduled because it was the Abana conference, so I'll pick a day sometime in July for live stream. August would have been the Rocky Mountain Smiths conference. It has also been canceled, so I will pick a day sometime in August to do a live stream. September is supposed to be a demonstration right here in my shop. Quite honestly, I don't see that happening. I don't think this thing's going away anytime before then, so I'm pretty sure September we will also have a live stream, and I will post that date when it gets closer to that date. Then we'll see about the rest of the year. Who knows, maybe by October things will start to settle down, but personally I think uh, I may keep up that once a month live stream, maybe for another year before things get back to normal. We'll just have to see. Anyways, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button down there. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop. Make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we will see you for the next one.